Um, How old were you again? 23. I was 23 years old. Yeah. And I was visiting a good buddy working on a cannabis farm up in Northern California. The drive up 101 to Mendocino, I remember it was really foggy and it was raining hard. And it would continue to rain almost nonstop for my entire time in Mendocino. Like just constant hard driving cold rain. <laughs> as soon as you cross the line into Mendocino County out of wine country, the trees are just huge. They're so tall that the canopy cuts out the daylight. I got to the town of Branscombe and my friend came and met me in a like jacked up 4x4 truck. It was the first time I'd been on the back roads. Every property there is gated. Most of the properties are posted no trespassing for a reason. You know, locked gate after locked gate, the roads get smaller and gnarlier until we finally get to the cannabis farm. And my friend had set up shop and was laying his head in sort of an outbuilding. Had no heat, no electricity, no water, nothing like that. The next day, I put in a little work on the farm. In interacting with other workers on the farm, they were all telling stories about how there was this Sasquatch running around that was threatening people in backwoods cannabis patches. They're like growling at people from the tree line and bluff charging, running at somebody and then skittering off into the distance or hurling rocks, like big rocks just come chunking down from uh, ridge lines. And I was like, are these people fucking with me? <laughs> like, is this the like fuck with the outsider new guy trying to scare me? Accounts varied. Sometimes it was the same Sasquatch. Sometimes it was a tribe of Sasquatch that were like all riled up because they were starting to put cannabis farms too far out in Bigfoot territory. And that's when things got even a little weirder. Second night I'm there, the guy that owns the place, he's rolling joints. He got a phone call. The conversation is a little tense. I mean, I remember him saying, like, you guys on a run? You got everything sorted? You know, he's like, okay, okay. And he's like, all right, but keep him mellow. You got to keep him mellow. About 15, 20 minutes later, see headlights of a truck outside. These two guys come in. They're soaked. They're muddy. And one of them was talking a mile a minute. His eyes are like the eyes of a panicked horse. You know, they're rolling around. I was sketched out enough by this guy's presence that I was just kind of trying to become one with the couch. The owner of the farm is trying to calm him down. Just like, just be cool, be cool, be cool. And his voice got up and he said, no, it wasn't a fucking rip off. All the weed's still there. It's ripped up, it's all over the place, but all the weed's still there. This wasn't a rip. The guy on the farm said, you sure they're dead? He's like, are you fucking not listening to me? Yes, I'm sure they're dead. They're mangled. And then the other guy who was with him was like, yeah, man, they're mangled. And the guy was like repeating over and over. It's like, we have to warn everybody. We have to warn everybody. He believed he had just seen three bodies, dead, mangled, torn to pieces. He started to say something loud and was shushed. 
And then he said, I'm telling you, man, a Bigfoot killed those guys. Just before dusk, uh, we heard this screaming cry. Now, I've heard every animal that lives in the locality, and it wasn't any of those. Everything was just dead quiet afterwards. Just made the hair crawl on the back of your neck. The odor of this animal, after I rolled the window down, was so offensive that I couldn't remain there any longer. And this thing truly scared me. This is the sign that the creature struck, leaving these indentations or scratch marks. Many sightings have revealed this creature to be between seven to nine feet tall and 600 to 900 pounds. He had the most knowing look on his face, his eyes. I remember the eyes, I think, more than anything else. The way it went up the mountain, the way everybody describes Bigfoot, that's the only thing I can think it was, because bear just don't do, do things like that. I'd look at that mountain, and I knew I didn't want to be around it. Uh, I knew something was there, or something was watching me all the time. I don't think that I had ever told anybody that story. I mean, I got plenty of stories that like sitting around like shooting the shit with people, like I'll, I'll lay out there, things that I experienced. I don't think that, that's never been in my repertoire of like stories that you share about, hey, well, here's a crazy fucking thing that happened to me. It just seems unbelievable. I wasn't even sure at first if I was completely misremembering this. So square one looked at missing persons reports. Nothing matched. There's no like three males that went missing that were last seen anywhere in either of those counties, like in the right time frame. As an investigative journalist, I believe that the truth is never told in nine to five hours. I realized pretty early on in my career that I had a knack for immersing myself in different worlds. Embedding with Chicano street gangs on both sides of a turf war, running dope with drug mules, staying up for 72 hours with crystal meth heads, going undercover as a neo-Nazi skinhead, that kind of shit. Those are the kind of stories I went after and how I went after them. Stalking monsters was a recurring theme for me. If I decided you were a monster, I was coming for you, and nothing was going to turn me aside. You were done. I've borne witness to a lot of crazy fucking stories. But the one about a Sasquatch wasting three dudes in dope country is bar none the craziest, all right? And for a quarter century and then some, I've just been carrying it with me, keeping it close. It's not in my nature to just set it down and walk away and forget about it. Because sure, maybe it's just a ghost story. Maybe there's nothing to it. Or maybe somebody got away with murder. And maybe I can find out who and how and why. I reached out to my buddy, who uh, had the same experience that I did in the cabin that night. I was trying to figure out whether my memories were accurate at all. Did you hear them say Bigfoot? Yeah. Because it was loud. And that's when I heard about the bodies, right? You know, like the way they were all torn up. 
I'm like, okay, he remembers too, you know? At the time, I was scared shitless. Man, I was scared shitless the whole time I was up there. I wanted to see if he knew how to get a hold of the guy that owned the farm. But he's not telling me shit about how to get a hold of the guy except to give me a couple names that I already had of people that might have his number. I'll bet you went into town when you left the next day or whatever and started asking questions. Fuck no, I didn't want any part of that. So why do you want to do it now? He was like, why are you doing this? You know, and it set me back on my heels from this. Like, whoa, well, <laughs> why am I doing this? Because it sounds ridiculous on the face of it. A Bigfoot murdered three guys on a dope farm. But once you peel back the first layer of that and you get the first glimpse of the truth behind that crazy fucking story, it's hard not to just keep peeling back layers to try and really get at it. The region's called the Emerald Triangle because there's three counties, Trinity, Humboldt, and Mendocino County. All three counties are famous worldwide for producing very high-grade, bright green cannabis plants. It's only once you're in the deep redwoods in Mendocino County or Humboldt County that this story of Sasquatch, this legend that has been passed down, starting with the indigenous people of the region for hundreds of years, starts to feel like less of a frivolous legend. Those woods are a spooky place. And it does feel in those woods like you're being watched, OK? You find yourself twitching a little bit. There's a dark history to this place. A lot of blood's been spilled beneath those redwood trees. And going back at least as far as the 1860s with the California gold rush, you know, you got hordes of white frontiersmen and plunderers coming in the area, just brutalizing the indigenous people and committing horrible massacres, including a number that targeted the Weah tribe. They snuck into the camps in the middle of the night and they used firearms to kill the adult men. And then they switched to knives, hatchets, and axes, and they butchered the women, children, and old people. Once the gold rush starts to die down, the timber industry springs up. That was the beginning of the rapacious loggers that were taking down the first old growth redwoods in Northern California, stripping the land and natural resources. A hundred years later, 1970, 95% of all the original redwoods have been cut down. A lot of those trees were over a thousand years old and they're just gone. That was about the time the hippies and the back of the landers started to move in. And they were drawn there in part by the lawlessness of the place. Because while there's a lot of danger in lawlessness, there's also a lot of freedom. A lot of people left the Bay Area or migrated across the country to go to Humboldt to like live the simple life, right? To, to build a homestead, to have a community, to have their own schools, to grow their own food. We found community really quickly because there were so many people with similar values, raising young children. We had an outhouse. We had one kerosene lamp. Uh, we had no electricity whatsoever. There's a great power to being on the mountain, and it's a beautiful way to live, and it starts to fix you. People thought, wow, we just stopped the Vietnam War, you know, at the age of Aquarius, a lot of magical thinking about how the system was going to transform and everything was going to be uh, unicorns and rainbows. Most people had not originally gone up to the Emerald Triangle to grow marijuana. They went up there because they wanted to go back to nature and have a nice place for their kids to grow up. 
only to discover once they were there that there weren't a whole lot of other ways to earn a living. So basically, most people got into marijuana by default. Having a cash crop that allowed the locals to thrive. The owner of the farm where I wound up in the fall of 1993 originally moved up there to kind of like, you know, get off the grid and get back to the land. Then he saw how much money you could make growing dope, and he became a major grower. You to take a bud of green shine, my creation, big, nice, chunky, old-time bud. Northern Mendocino County probably has the best climate for growing cannabis, by far. Nice little joint. Everything out there, the flowers are more intense. The wildcrafted herbs are more intense. It has the tastiest tomatoes. And by extension, the cannabis that people have grown out there is just the best in the world. Oh, and here's, look at this. Here, wait a minute, Sasquatch has appeared. Here he is. Oh, it's Sasquatch. Oh, yeah, not so scary or tough. Let's talk about Bigfoot. Let's talk about Sasquatch. What's your take on Sasquatch, Bigfoot? Like, what, well, what is Sasquatch? you know, I personally have never seen one or seen anything that said to me, Oh my God, this is pretty good evidence, but I'm kind of from Missouri on that stuff. I'll be open to a lot of things, but for me to say I know it or got it, I pretty much got to experience it firsthand, and I have not. The one thing I have heard uh, about Sasquatch is that um, usually before you see them, if the wind is blowing right, you get, they have a very, sweet, musky smell. That could be when she's in that time of her moon cycle and when she's really uh, looking for love. Hello? Hey, this is uh, David Holthouse. So start contacting everybody that I can find that was a part of the cannabis industry in the Emerald Triangle in the early 1990s. I heard a pretty crazy story that uh, a Sasquatch had killed three guys on a weed farm. Uh huh. Does that sound like a story you heard before? Not at all. <laughs> okay. No, I wish I had. Anything like that ringing any kind of bell? No. Sasquatch, murder, dope farm, anything like that? Yeah, I know. Oh, boy. <laughs> well, that's the funniest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> so, no, but, you know, I, I, I'm very much interested in the UFO subject, and you may know that the Navy has come out with statements that in the Navy has... But hitting dead ends, so decided to hire a um, private investigator. Hey, boys, how are you? Good, man. So I'll just sort of start from the beginning. I just graduated. The thinking was, get an ex-cop who's now a PI in Mendocino County. They're going to be familiar with the dope world. They're probably going to have sources in that world now. To somebody that had a foot in both worlds. I've never heard of anything like that, but it's not to say that there were three bodies that were never found or reported to the sheriff's office. You know, I mean, I could, I, I could find, I could ask other people that were, you know, working around that time. Yeah. I also know lots of uh, former growers too. Right. <laughs> She's like, yeah, let me dig around for you. Next step, try and find another angle in. Anybody ever tell you firsthand about a Sasquatch that was aggressive or violent toward them, like firsthand story? Yeah, I, I heard several firsthand stories about them getting violent. 
There was one story about some guy out in Witch Pick got pulled apart, like all four of his limbs and head pulled off. And that was back in the early 70s. Man, when they see you, they just see a big old slab of meat walking out there. Don't trust them. I started thinking, if anybody has uh, heard this story, it's going to be Squatchers. Mendocino County, Humboldt County, this whole region, it's most famous for two things. One is Sasquatch habitat. The other is cannabis farms. Yeah, well, um, growers are looking for the same kind of place Squatchers were, somewhere that was deep, remote, inaccessible, and had water. So they were, they'd run into each other out there, you know, pretty often. They're a lot of sightings of the Bigfoot up in uh, the North California, Mendocino area, Humboldt County area. I mean, there's been rumors up there about 10 foot tall pot plants. The buds on tops are all snapped off. Well, it's Bigfoot. Just, I mean, eat them like corn. Plus they get a nice little buzz off it. The whole Pacific Northwest is just wild, rugged Sasquatch terrain. For people to think, like, where do they hide? You, you're pretty ignorant of what's, what the train is like around out here. You come up here, you fly from, like, San Francisco to Anchorage, you'll see it's just nonstop mountain, forests, lakes, rivers for thousands of miles. And then you'll see, like, a little population center. When I got to Northern California back in 1993, I mean, I knew that the lore of the place was that the Patterson-Gimlin film had been captured, you know, not far from where I was. The gold standard of Bigfoot footage is still the Patterson-Gimlin film from 67, 50 years later, it's number one still. Right here in this big, comfortable chair? Yes, please, sir. OK, <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I do want to get a pictures of this <clears throat> Oh, hey, that is perfect. That's Thank you so much. <laughs> People have said there's no such thing, no such creature can exist. So we decided to see if we could find more evidence. We rode every day miles and miles and miles, about 35, 40 miles a day, making big circles around and through the mountains. The 20th day, it was about 2 o'clock in the afternoon. The sun was still up nice, and we was riding up the creek bed. And uh, all at once, one was standing across the creek, looking straight at us. Roger got his camera out. You see her make that famous turn like that to look at me when I got off the horse. When I saw her, I thought, Oh, my God, these things really do exist. You ever heard of a Sasquatch attacking or killing people? No, not at all. I've heard of stories of where they've protected people, uh, but never any stories of, of, of people being killed by them. In my opinion, if we, if we do go into the woods, Go with an open mind. Appreciate the forest, appreciate everything there, and maybe you might see one. No, no, no. No, this way. Oh, I'm sorry. That's the way you said for the chair. It was the other way. Where do we differ on what Sasquatch is? Well, you believe that Sasquatch can teleport. And no. Yes, you do. No, I yes, do not. You do. Do not go there. And you believe that he, no. can, he can cloak and all that other fucking bullshit. No, I do not. Yes, God you do. It. We've the talked only about thing, this before. And you get it wrong. No. The I only thing I, I believe... He's, he's just a being. He's a blood and guts human being kind of creature.
So many people have experiences. I've had personal experiences. I have walked into the woods and had noises following me, and I know that it wasn't a kitty cat. My first encounters were when I was 10, what I saw out the window at 2 o'clock in the morning. You know, those eyes. And I remember screaming. I was camping, and around, I would say, 2 o'clock in the morning or so, I hear noises, and I see my tent being squished down. And then I start screaming and screaming and screaming, and then I just hit the tent. And this thing just, like, jumped up, and you can hear it moving backwards and just running off. And I'm just, like, terrified. I mean, I am just terrified the rest of the night. I used to go fishing a lot. This one particular night, I turned and I, I looked up the river, and all I could see was this, um, uh, it's like a, a form. It was, sorry. Um, it stank, and it looked like it was um, covered with, like, dreadlocks. And it was just going through the water, and I couldn't figure out what that could have been. Then all of a sudden, um, this uh, um, see my hair standing up in my arms now. It's this scream, um, like a, a banshee. I turned and I ran. I I never went back. And I know that if I'd stuck around. I might not be here. All I know is it's that it scared the crap out of me. It's the only time in my life that um, I've been that scared. One of the first questions I'm often asked by people, uh, including journalists, is, uh, so you believe in Bigfoot? And I say, no, I don't believe in Bigfoot. And let that stew for just a moment until they're uncomfortable, and then explain. When I'm asked that question, usually from a skeptical point of view, it usually connotes a position of faith. Have I accepted something in the absence of evidence? And no, I'm convinced that Sasquatch exists. It's the evidence that convinces me. The most compelling evidence for the existence of Sasquatch, from my point of expertise, is the footprint evidence. I've spent a lot of time assembling a very large sample of footprints from all over North America. When we consider the odds that all these tracks are simply spurious hoaxes, it becomes incredible. How is it that these hoaxers have incorporated things that have only come to light and been understood in the realm of science and anthropology in the past you know, few decades? If I were to estimate the number of Sasquatch here in Idaho, I would come up with a figure that, even if I was liberal, about maybe 300. We're talking about a hundredfold more black bear than Sasquatch. How many carcasses of black bear do you stumble on when you're out on a hike? Black bear are notoriously rare and elusive. They're called the shadow of the forest. Hearing that a Bigfoot killed someone, it seemed pretty believable, you know? I'm sure there's people that disappear that it's because of a squatch. My one buddy down in Southern Humboldt, he had the thing throw like a big chunk of log out of just overhead, just whoosh. 
Most of it was just a lot of growling and bluff charging. I mean, I've been bluff charged plenty of times. Not plenty, but several. And it's, it's, it's effective if it wants you to leave. As with any large and potentially dangerous animal, you need to show the proper uh, sensibility and precautions. I never go out in the field without pepper spray or a sidearm uh, for personal security. I mean, after all, we're talking about a 800 to a 1,200 pound primate. They could lift 50 gallon barrels of oil and throw it like it's a toy. So they're so strong, they, I mean, they could tear a body apart? Oh, easily. Hey, man, how are you? Good. Um, I happen to be talking to some people, and uh, I was just picking their brains about, you know, you mentioned the Sasquatch and all that. And I, I have a lead at talking to people. Really? Mm -hmm. uh, what did you hear? I have a, uh, a close friend of mine that, um, for the last 30 years, that's what he did for a living, his girl Pine. Wanted to pick his brain, hey, did you ever hear anything about that? He goes, yeah, I have. Then I said, Okay, well, I'd like to talk to you. If your friend was willing to to talk to us or pass information through you, either one, like we'd be, uh, we're all ears, man. Yeah. Like I said, I'll, I'll do everything I can and, you know, keep you apprised of what I got going on. All right, man. All right, thanks. Yeah, I didn't, like, get anywhere today, but one thing that I did notice today that I've noticed before, just in like knocking around up here, talking to people that are, like anybody associated with like the cannabis sort of cultivation scene up here, then or now, is that there's a current of belief in supernatural forces that runs deeper up here than I think in most places. Is your confidence that these murders actually occurred? I keep coming back to what I know, OK? What I know is what I heard in October 1993 in that cabin. And I heard a guy that was like fucking terrified and traumatized. I am convinced that he was convinced that he had seen three bodies on a pot farm that were mutilated, mangled, torn to pieces, and he believed that a Sasquatch had done it. I would go on in my career to be in situations where things got violent or things had just been violent, and always the temperature in the room sort of shifts. And these guys came into the place, and the temperature changed, and you could actually feel it in the room. So it was obvious that they were coming directly from having seen this scene of the murder. And I know that there were all these stories about aggressive Sasquatches at the time because I heard them, you know? That's what I know. But I haven't found anybody else who's heard the story about three dudes getting killed on a dope farm in 1993. I mean, fuck. This is all grabbing at smoke right now still, you know? It's still all just grabbing at smoke. It's just like, you know. A friend of mine in L.A. put me on to a dope dealer in Oakland. Dope dealer in Oakland said, I wasn't up there at that time, but I know a guy who was for sure. Hey, is this Razor? Yes. Hey, Razor, my name's David Holthouse. I think a uh, mutual acquaintance of ours said I'd be giving you a call about a project that I got going. Yes, yeah. The time and place is Emerald Triangle, early to mid-1990s. Like, 
our mutual acquaintance said that you had some valuable perspective and experience in that time and place. Can you just uh, tell me a little bit about your background in that regard? Um, yeah, I was uh, I was growing a lot of cannabis out there back in those days. Uh, in Mendo and Humboldt? Yeah, yeah. Well, listen, man, let me sort of lay this, uh, this story out for you, okay? I heard three individuals were murdered on a weed farm somewhere in northern Mendocino County. I don't know where. And that the murders purportedly were carried out by a Sasquatch. Okay? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is I, does that ring does that ring any sort of bell for you? Uh, yeah, that definitely uh, sounds like an incident that I remember '93 specifically. I just remember a story that there was farm workers, possibly Mexican nationals, and the Sasquatch got them. And their camp was found with you know the bodies torn apart everywhere. Without missing a beat, he goes, three Mexican dudes in Mendo, fall of 93. Boom. No. <laughs> okay, tell me more. That story stood out because uh, at least four different times I heard some reference to it. I do recall a story kind of centered around the Spy Rock area. And he says, oh, yeah, I remember hearing that story in bars a lot. These three Mexican guys had gotten killed by a Bigfoot at a, at a, at a farm on Spy Rock Road. He said, on Spy Rock Road. So that's a lead. That's a lead. What's the Spy Rock area? Uh, Spy Rock is uh, near the Mendocino Humboldt border. You know, pretty rugged terrain kind of prime area to go into and uh, find the spot and grow a crop. You know, I was up in Spy Rock. I lived up in Spy Rock for some time. There's a stone on the way up to Spy Rock and it's one of the oldest engraved petroglyphs in the whole United States. So it has a whole mysticism to Spyrock. It is inland enough and raises high enough above the cloud line and the fog line that if you get up the mountain a certain height, you don't deal with rot in the plants. In Sonoma County, everything rots. The plants on Spy Rock are far bigger than any plants in Sonoma or Mendocino County. When you start getting thousands of feet up those mountains, you get into pretty rugged and hard terrain. And I would suggest anybody go wandering up there um, looking around because it's not that kind of place. They don't want outsiders up there. How far away was the cabin you were in from Spy Rock Road? See, Brands come to Spy Rock Road somewhere in the neighborhood of an hour, I would guess. Let me check it, okay? Just, I you. no, I just want to know. Oh, wait a minute, it's only 15 minutes. Sure. Yeah, it's only 15 minutes. I wouldn't be able to find the cabin I was in that night, but I know that it was just outside of Branscombe. So even if you stretch it out, you know, that they were north of Leightonville and I was south of Branscombe, maximum they would have been 30, 35 minutes away. Quite possible that they were closer. So. The geography and the time frame is a pretty good match. Going to meet a guy named Razor uh, in the high desert outside Joshua Tree, and 
I don't know Razor's real name, but I've asked around about him and what I've heard is that he's uh, a guy that was raised by the Hells Angels in San Bernardino in the 60s when he was a kid. He started growing cannabis sometime in the 70s and grew in Humboldt, Mendocino counties in the 80s all the way through the 90s. He got busted three times, did three bids in San Quentin, but he always kept his mouth shut. He never rolled over on anybody, he never said anything to the cops. And that's earned him a lot of respect and credibility uh, among other cannabis growers in Northern California. So you know, I've got plenty of people on the phone, but whenever I'd work my way around to, well, hey, I'm looking into a triple homicide from the early 90s, I was always careful not to give anybody the, the date um, because I didn't want him to just feed information back to me and take me for a ride. But when I finally got Razor on the phone and I laid that line on him, he immediately said, yeah, three Mexican guys on a backwoods patch in Mendo County, fall of 1993. So he nailed the date. So I think that he knows something. I think that he's at least heard the story or version of the story. I have. <laughs> Is that about how you like it? So the 1993 season, you heard a crazy fucking Bigfoot story. Tell me that story. You know, I'll say this, that time period was like, there was a lot going on. Every time I stopped for a second to take a breath and socialize for a minute with some people, I would hear stories. But this one story stood out just because I had never heard anyone like say it, you know, with such conviction. It was like a serious call to arms. This is the biggest threat we're going to be facing towards the end of the season. So we're going to get attacked by Sasquatches, as if the stuff we were up against already wasn't enough. got a uh, kind of a sketched out and unsettling text message from the former Mendocino County cop turned private investigator I've been working with the last couple weeks. 